Hello friends, my name is Sachin Chowan and you are watching video related to the operating system. Hello friends, in this video tutorial, we are going to solve a problem based on shortage job first, non preemptive fashion. As you know that non preemptive means we cannot break execution of any process at any time. That is, we have to complete a process once it is allocated by the CPU. Okay, so try to find out the Gantt chart for this, and the Gantt chart is like like this starts from zero. So check is there any process coming at time interval of zero? Yes, arrival time of P0 process is zero. That means for the time interval zero, we are having P0 in our system. So allocate CPU to P0 process. As it's a non preemptive task, you have to complete the execution of p0 that is up to 3 okay now again check is there any process from 0 to 3 with arrival time yes there are some processes that is p1 and p2 so the p1 and p2 processes p1 coming for 5 and p2 is coming for 2 okay so just use shortage job first here the shortage job is P2 that's why we can schedule here P2 and its uh, bus time was 2 so 3 plus 2 that becomes 5 again check is there any process up to 5 no but we are having P1 process which was uh, previously used so schedule this P1 process its time was 5 so 5 plus 5 becomes 10 so up to this 10 we are having a process new process arriving at system at 9 so you can schedule this p3 process and the bus time was 3 so here 10 plus 5 becomes 15 up to from 0 to 15 you are having a new process at 12 that is p4 so schedule p4 and this becomes 15 plus 5 20 so this completes your gantt chart okay now again a table that is process arrival times bus times it is given in your question 0 1 3 9 and 12 3 5 2 5 and 5 next one is completion time turnaround time waiting time and response time completion time can be calculated from this gan chart completion time for p0 is 3 so this 3 P1 10 so it's 10 P2 it's 5 5 P3 it's 15 and for P4 it's 20 okay now the formula for this turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time so completion time we have calculated here so 3 minus arrival time 3 minus 0 that is 3 10 minus 1 that's 9 5 minus 3 becomes 2 15 minus 9 becomes 6 and 20 minus 12 becomes 8 okay friends now the waiting time so waiting time is calculated by the formula turnaround time minus burst time so turnaround time we have calculated here bus time is already given your question so 3 minus 3 becomes 0 9 minus 5 becomes 4 2 minus 2 it's 0 6 minus 5 1 and 8 minus 5 becomes 3 okay again the next is response time first instance of particular process minus arrival time of that particular process okay so here response time of p0 process the first instance of p0 that is cpu allocated to p0 process at 0 minus its arrival time so 0 minus 0 becomes 0 next one is p2 process 3 3 minus arrival time is 3 so again it's 0 p1 process 5 minus arrival time is 1 so it becomes 4 5 minus 1 becomes 4 next one is p3 instance is 10 10 minus 9 it's 1 and the last one is p4 15 
15 minus 12 it becomes 3 okay now the formula for average turnaround time that is addition of this column 3 plus 9 plus 2 plus 6 plus 8 divided by total number of processes that is 5 and uh, the addition is 28 divided by 5 the answer is near about 5.6 and the last is average waiting time the addition of this 4 plus 1 plus 3 divided by 5 the answer is 8 divided by 5 and it remains 1.6 that is average waiting time for 1.6 units okay thank you if you like this video please press like and subscribe button thanks for watching